Creatively as a child, I think I was always collecting things and I was always really interested in the way things were put together. Mum always allowed me to like make things in the backyard and make my own furniture and paint my room and everything. So creativity was always uh, encouraged. I didn't set out to go, ooh, the brand will be this. It was more about developing an idea that felt that that's what I needed to do. I think I'd definitely prefer the, as opposed to this structure. I think Australian product designers have a younger, fresher approach. There's a good vibe, you know, a lot of my colleagues are making some incredible work Maybe. that I'm just like, wow, like we're really at the forefront of doing some really great stuff. Everything that happens is designed to assist you to go to the next phase that you need to go through. Sometimes you get really slow months, something's gone wrong, you have to replace it and cost you a fortune. The beauty of that is, and it sort of happens for a reason, it's like, oh, okay, now we're gonna go in this direction and we have to do this kind of thing. There's two ways, I think, ultimately, that we're innovative. One is reactive and one is proactive. Innovating through reactivity is responding to client needs. On that kind of front, we have to be innovative because we need to understand the latest technology. We need to integrate that into the work. Innovative work through reactivity is annoying, <laughs> but you have to do it. The other way the studio is innovative is through exploration. Quite often that might be late nights cleaning up an area that we haven't really attended to for a while and then just realizing that like, ah, oh, if we cross this with this, then we'll get this kind of outcome. And so innovative play ends up becoming something you can never kind of plan, you know, never sort of thought of. Yeah, I think that's how, I think that's how innovation works. <laughs>